Standing in the smoke, the fool cries out the ritual words, which always go with the throwing of the hood. Right! It's host again, host! Turn again, turn! If the meet a man, knock him down, but don't do it! The house against house, town against town, with the fool's rhyme, referred to Haxi, in the next village of Westwood Side, separated only by the field where the game begins. First of all, 12 running hoods made of sacking have to be thrown. Get back, get back off her knees. Go on, get back. This is the light-hearted stage of the game before the real rough stuff begins. Right. It's us again, us. Tone again, tone. If thou makes a man, knock him down, but don't touch him. <laughs> the running hoods are thrown mainly for the young boys. The adult boggins try to block their attempts to carry the hood off the field into the village, and there's a prize for any lad who succeeds. <laughs> Once the leather sway hood is thrown, the character of the game changes dramatically. Within the sway are contingents of men from all the pubs in and around Haxi and Westwood Side, all bent on forcing the sway first into their home village and then into their particular pub, where the hood will remain as a trophy till next year. So many tons of muscle and bone are slow to move, and when night falls, there are usually several hours of mighty pushing and shoving still to go. are not anti-Christian. Indeed, they were found to be extremely tolerant of other religions. Tolerance is not extended to them. Theirs is a fertility cult, and consequently much misunderstood. Male and female alternate in their rites, and the supreme aim is the fusion of the male and female deity, the making whole of the great life force. The highly secret rites you now see have never before been televised. We are naked in our rights as a sign of freedom and equality. So that this taking off clothes leaves everybody in the same state. I think it shows our democratic principles. This is the initiation ceremony, much of which we were not allowed to film. The initiate has now been accepted as a member of the coven. The coven, the symbol of being, of organization, and of growth. Eco, eco, erida. Eco, eco, erberac. Eco, eco, gomelac. Have you ever heard of a straw wedding? Well, you're going to hear about one now in Derry Lynn in the county of Fermanagh. A, a straw wedding probably dates back to pre Christian times, but certainly dates back as far as the Crusades. That when the bridal couple returned from their honeymoon, the local farmers and farmers' boys gathered together, dressed in straw, to welcome home the happy couple. On 364 days of the year, nothing much happens here to disturb the ancient pattern of a farming community. But on one day in January, the village church is the starting point of a strange procession, with roots beyond Christianity itself in the days of pagan ritual and human sacrifice. Where Godland play starts, come again. 
all deck the ribbons fair. See, no, we'll do the best we can, and the best can do near me. What they call plough stocking has its origins in Scandinavian prehistory. But if you think Jack Scarth's uniform has little of the Viking about it, that's easily explained. He's head waiter at a local hotel. As leader, Jack is known as the gentleman. And behind him come the stots, the ancient name for the bullocks which pulled the plough. Most of these stately sword dancers are local farmers, heavily disguised in pink and blue outfits, which have clearly changed a good deal since Viking times. Once they would have cavorted round a human victim, without the accompaniment of Jeff Hugill on the harmonica. On the fringes, an ancient double act known as Isaac and Betty perform mysterious rites. The precise significance of it all is lost forever in the mists of antiquity. But the climax to each dance remains the grisly memory of a human life given to appease the gods and speed the plough. Tomorrow is Uphelia. Uphelia is actually a very old Viking fire festival that was revived again in the 19th century. It happens every year on the last Tuesday in January up in Lerwick in the Shetland Islands. Almost as important as the horse itself is its partner, the dancer, or teaser. Some say that the origin of it all dates back to the 18th century, when French troops who had landed at Padstow were chased out of the town again by a group of women dressed up as horses. In fact, the custom is thought to be much older than that, probably being a survival of pre-Christian fertility rites practiced by the Celts. But whatever the origin, it's still today Padstow's biggest celebration of the year. For the week after Christmas, the Vale of Glamorgan and the South Wales Valleys are haunted by a figure out of Celtic mythology. Accompanied by a motley crew of revellers, Mary Lewitt, the Grey Mare or Grey Mary, descends on isolated farms to exact tribute in the form of hospitality. This is New Year's night at Kevin Cluid in the hills above Abertridor. <laughs> In theory, a household can refuse entry to Mary Lewitt and turn her away. But the ostler, the sergeant, the Betsy, and the rest of her crew know all the tricks they need to get past locked doors. <laughs>
award has gone to the Duke William, and the victory, this time, to the men of Haxey over Westwood side.